Hi, in this trade cam video, we're going to look at the relationship between KP and KC. In the other videos, we have talked about on how to write the KP and KC and what is KP and what is KC. And now we're going to look at how we can relate this two equilibrium constant expression together. And the way we're going to do that is by deriving it from PV equals to NRT to get the relationship between KP and KC. So essentially, this is how you're going to talk about the relationship between the equilibrium constant expression for pressure and equilibrium constant expression for concentration. But how do we get to this point? We're going to do that by deriving from PV equals to NRT. So let's consider a general equation. So the small a over here is the stoichiometry for reactant A. And the small b over here is the stoichiometry for reactant B. Same goes to your C and D. So let's have a look at this hypothetical general equation. So there can be any kind of equilibrium reactions. Okay. Now, the first thing you need to do is you need to write the Kc. Okay. So number one, you're going to write what is the Kc for the given equilibrium reactions. Okay. So um, the Kc would be concentration of C to the power of, I'm going to use um, a different color for your stoichiometry so that it would be easy for you to look at. And then times with concentration D, of course, you're going to have to the power of D. Divide by concentration of A and concentration of B. Remember, they have. Okay, so that is the first thing you need to do. You need to write the expression for concentration. And then, second, you have to write the pressure expression so it's going to be the same thing so you have pressure of c times pressure of d to the power of c here and for your pressure d to the power of d divide by the pressure of reactant A times the pressure of reactant B. Don't forget, you have the coefficient A and B. So you have written both of the expression. Okay, now we have to do an assumption. Okay, next thing is, let's assume, so we're always going to assume Assume that the gases behave ideally. So when you do this assumption, we can use PV equals to N R T. So the third thing over here is after you have a SU, you can rearrange this. You get pressure equals to N over V times RT. So I'm just going to move the volume to that side. The reason why I want to move volume to that side is because you do remember that now this part over here 
we can have it in terms of concentration okay that is n over v is equivalent to concentration so mole n over volume um maybe liter or anything this is your concentration so concentration the symbol is square brackets okay so when you look at this assumption now now you can write your pressure in terms of concentration so we're gonna put um we're gonna substitute this now this we are going to sub substitute into k p okay because now when you look here this is pressure and that one is equivalent to this okay now when you look at your pressure so we can we can substitute that into here okay so how do we do that so remember this okay i'm gonna try to, i'm gonna remind you this again so we're gonna rewrite that so so the kp just now that we have pressure of c pressure of d pressure of a pressure of b don't forget to the power of c to the power of d to the power of a to the power of b so this is what we have from for number two just now yep okay and then what we get from number three we get p equals to the concentration times r t so i'm going to rewrite that again so i'm going to substitute three into here so we're going to substitute into there so what's going to happen so you have kp equals two this one is going to be a long one there so we're going to start with pc so p pressure over here will be for c so that is going to be the concentration of c okay so you have concentration sorry i'm just going to use a different color blue we have concentration of c okay concentration of c over r c okay to the power of c so this now i have rewritten that into that form to this okay because concentration crt is equivalent to the pressure there so we're going to do the same thing for pressure d pressure a and b okay Don't forget, you have to the power of A. Now, now we have a 
the fourth one, so to speak, okay? The fourth step over here after you have substituted inside. So when you look at the substitution, you can take out this, 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 and this, okay? And then you can group them together, isn't it? So what happened now, you can rewrite that again. Then you can have concentration C, C, concentration D over concentration A, concentration B, Okay, so I'm going to take out all the RTs. Now you have all the RTs together and C plus D. This is just mathematics. A plus B. So you get something like this. And then if you realize now that expression that we have here looks very similar to your KC, okay? What we can do now, therefore, this you can substitute with your KC because I repeat, if you look at your case C, there is the same, yeah? So we can rewrite that again. Therefore, what we get is Kp equals to your Kc. Then you get Rt and so you get this. Okay, so that's how you're gonna derive the relationship between Kp and Kc from PV equals to nRT. So how do you use this equation? So we're going to use um, that one in the situation over here. We have a, okay, you have a reaction there. So is it homogeneous or heterogeneous? All of them are the same. So this is heterogeneous. Sorry, that is one. Now we're going to have a look at how we're going to use this formula, Kp equals to Kc, the relationship between Kp and Kc in a question. So usually this formula can be can only be used for homogeneous reaction involving gases, okay? Because only gases can have Kp and Kc. Now we have, um, if you look there, all of them are gases, okay? So this is homogeneous. It has a kc value okay over here it says you have a kc value of that so what is the value of kp of this reaction you have the temperature okay so how do we do that okay how do we solve how do we find the kp 
So I remember the formula just now. So we're going to use KP equals to KC RC delta M to the power of delta mo over there. So first thing what we need to do is we're going to find what is this first. And it's very easy. So you have to look at the coefficient over here. So we're going to start with the product first. So all, all over here on the product side, you have two mole of NH3. So you, that is two mole. So you're going to write two. Okay. And you do not have any other products other than NH3 for this. So you can have two over there. And when you go over to the reactant side, you're going to start to minus that. Okay. And then when you look at your reactant side, so I'm going to do that in blue, you have one mole of N2 and three mole of that one. Okay. So what we do here, you're going to have, um, one plus three okay so because you have one mole of n2 that is one this number one over here represents the one mole of n2 on the product side plus three mole of that so you have this so what do you get then so you will get negative two so that is the value for delta n negative two and then next what we need to do is you need to get the temperature okay remember we're going to use r r is indeed your constant therefore your temperature needs to be in kelvin okay but the given temperature is degrees celsius so what do we need to do now you need to change that into Kelvin. Okay, so number two, step two, you take temperature, but this time you have 500 degrees Celsius plus 273.15, and you get 773.15 Kelvin. So that is the temperature we're gonna use and the R value, we do know that it's going to be 0 0.08206 liter atmospheric pressure per mole per Kelvin. Okay, so let's just going to plug in all the values. So we're going to take the value, all of the value over here. We're going to put that inside to get Kp. Okay, so the third step, I'm going to use blue color now. We're going to find Kp equals to kc is given 6.0 times 10 to the power of negative 2 okay so it's to the power of negative 2 right there so you're going to times with 0 0.08206 times with your temperature over here 773.15 and remember you have delta n and the delta n value is negative 2 so the delta n over here negative 2 then you have negative 2 there therefore you should be able to get something 1.5 times 10 to the power of negative 5. So you're going to leave your answer without a unit because this is your KP.